So thank you everybody for uh, coming to this presentation. I'm going to talk about crowd modeling and simulation. Um, and uh, I'm going to show uh, recent results of a couple of projects uh, related to crowd modeling. Uh, the first thing I want to, this, to, to present is uh, our lab. It's called the Advanced Real-Time Simulation Lab. Uh, it's at Carleton University in Ottawa, the capital of Canada. And uh, what we do is a bunch of different things. If you visit our website, you will see that this is only one of the things that we do. Um, a wide variety of applications ranging from uh, networking and telecommunications, uh, methodologies, uh, in particular parallel, distributed, and real-time simulation, and the application to robotic and embedded systems. Um, and we are also uh, focusing on how to use uh, modeling and simulation to model different dif uh, physical phenomena. Uh, the one that we are going to discuss today is crowd modeling. And uh, everything that we do is uh, based on discrete event systems. In particular, these are discrete event crowds. We're going to show what's the influence of existing biological models into these crowd models. And again, uh, all that we do is based on discrete event system specifications. So what we do is based on a formal technique called DEVS invented by Bernie Ziegler a long time ago, and it has evolved a long time. Uh, DEVS is a formalism. Everything that you do is, uh, it has a mathematical background. You model your system uh, using mathematical equations that are discrete event equations. And we invented a few years ago something called cell DEVS, which is a combination between something that looks like cellular automata and uh, these DEVS models. The idea is that you have a grid of cells. Each one of the cells has a computing machine. This machine is implemented with devs. Uh, I don't have a good angle for the, for the laser here, anyways. So um, the idea is that when each one of the cells receive an input, it's going to activate. The cells are not doing anything, so you don't waste compute time computing things that are useless. And then when you receive an input, you, you activate a computation function that is going to maybe produce a state change. If nothing happens, the cell goes to sleep again, so you stop wasting uh, compute cycles. But if something so happens, you're going to inform a set of neighboring cells which will wake up and compute. You don't do that immediately. You do it after a delay. We have different delay functions, and uh, this allows you to model uh, delays of the behavior of each one of the cells in a very uh, elegant way. <clears throat> The, so uh, we can formalize all of this. We can, you can bring this to a board. This